to another video. Today we're going to be diving back into my CD collection and we're going to be looking at the CDs I own by the band The Cars. Have you heard of them? Ever heard of them? No? Maybe? Well, let's dig in. So, first up, obviously, their debut, The Cars. Uh, this came out in 1978. Um, almost like a perfect debut, you know? It just really just chock full of... Uh, amazing tunes you know this is really like pretty like impressive debut um or introduction to the band you would say you know it's almost like one of those albums where you listen to it and it's like this feels like it could be like a greatest hits record you know um good times roll my best friend's girl just what i needed uh don't just stop you're all i got tonight bye bye love moving in stereo blah blah, blah. they're all every one of them just a perfect perfect record Debut by the Cars. Two up. Two up. <laughs> Next up. Oh, man, it's early. It's early. It's not really early, but I just got up. Uh, the Cars Candio, their second album. Uh, another really good one. Uh, Let's Go. Um, it's All I Can Do. Double Life. Candio. Um, dangerous Type. Yeah, just a really great follow-up to their debut. Candio. Then you've got Panorama. This is probably the this out of their whole catalog. This is probably the um, the polarizing album. I would say. I know there's a lot of fans of this record, and I know there's a lot of people who really don't like this record. I remember when it came out in uh, eighty, I believe, nineteen eighty, right? Yep. Um, it really kind of it it just didn't have the impact that the first two did. You know, um, there weren't like tons of uh, tracks on here that were getting uh, all this radio airplay, you know. Um, Touch and Go, I think, was the, like, lead single or the big single from this, you know. Um, Give Me Some Slack, I remember liking. Panorama is pretty good. Um, the rest of the album is kind of a blur for me, but, but I remember when this came out in 1980. It might have been, like, a year later or something, but it just... Uh, seemed like the album wasn't very successful and i even remember like my neighbor darren he went to like the local like roller rink you know go roller skating or whatever and and they gave him a free copy of this like on cassette just for showing up that day or whatever it was kind of weird you know like uh just seemed like one of those things like they were just like trying to give him away essentially you know but it's, it's an interesting album, one I really probably need to uh, dive into again and give it another listen, because I haven't listened to this in a long, long time, but uh, it I probably needs uh, like a, you know, a reevaluation, so to say, for me. Then you sort of get shaken up kind of back to basics, you know, a lot of hit singles, Since You're Gone, Shake It Up was really popular, I'm Not The One, um, but... This kind of, you know, kind of, uh, I wouldn't call it like a comeback record, but, you know, kind of bounced back from Panorama. They had some hit singles and everything. And this is when music videos are really starting to kind of become popular. And the cars certainly, uh, you know, were very successful with their music videos, which leads us to 1984's Heartbeat City. Um great great album uh you know this is produced by mutt lang um just i mean this is 1984 this is when all the bands were releasing multiple singles from their albums it wasn't any more of like you know two singles and that was it like this is the era of releasing four five six singles and the cars were no different from that you have hello again um magic Tr drive uh, you might think, which was a big, which the first single, a big hit, and it was the first um, best video for the very first MTV Awards, the VMAs, was uh, for 1984, and uh, you might think won the best video that year. It's a good video. Um, Why Can't I View was a single as well, um, but really good album. It's one of those records. It, I really love it, but it's you know you it's so you've heard these rec songs so many times that it may be one of those records you kind of you know uh 
don't think about too much anymore because it was just so overplayed and just all over radio and video and everything back then. But uh, it really is a, a phenomenal record. And it's funny, one of my favorite tunes on this wasn't released as a single, Stranger Eyes. And Looking for Love wasn't released as a single. That's a really good song as well. But yeah, just a really excellent album. And then the band put out The Greatest Hits, Take a Little Breather. Good collection of uh, tracks. If you're not familiar with the cars, this is a great place. You know, if you just want something uh, with just like their hits, this is an excellent collection. Uh, all the ones you'd kind of want are on here. Um, there's a newer version of this, I think is called like Complete Greatest Hits, which maybe has, you know, two or three extra tracks that, that aren't on here. But uh, they, you know, like a lot of people, especially at this point in time, were doing, they uh, recorded a new song for this, Tonight She Comes, and released that as a single. And uh, excellent song. I love that song. It's a really, really good one. Um, but yeah, good collection. Then the group gets back together. They had all kind of done a few solo projects and whatever. Then they come back together in 1987 and release Door to Door, which kind of felt a little... It definitely felt a little lackluster. They didn't really seem that into being a band anymore you know it seemed almost like i don't know if they owed the record label an album uh you know so i don't know if this was like a contract kind of thing but it, it definitely has the feel of that it, it has the feel of like i know there's a couple of these songs that are older that they just re-recorded um but it, it it's a pretty good record i kind of like it it wasn't really successful um you know, moderately successful. Maybe it went gold. I don't know. Maybe it went platinum, but, um, but it, it definitely feels like a band that's kind of like on their last legs, you know? Um, then they part ways, uh, Rhino, I guess, what year did this come out? 95 Rhino puts out this two CD anthology called just what I needed. Um, double CD there. Uh, and uh, this is really good. This originally came in one of those like fat CD things. I just kind of, you know, whittled it down to a one slim line or, you know, a slimmer case just for, you know, sh storage purposes. Um, but uh, and I think it originally came in like with a slip case that had like um, like this, like silver and everything was kind of like reflective or whatever. But, you know, this is just an awesome collection just kind of spanning the whole career it's got a few demos on it um but excellent uh you know uh anthology for the cars then uh you know that's kind of all you hear from the band and ben Orr unfortunately passed away um and that seemed like it was going to be it and then suddenly out of the blue nobody's expecting this or even thinking about it all of a sudden one day I think they put some little snippets online of like a couple of songs they're working on. The Cars are working on a new record. It just seems so insane, but it leads us to Move Like This, which came out in what, 2011. And uh, it's pretty good. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's, it's sad that Ben Orr's not on it and you definitely can kind of, you know, s feel his presence missing uh, to certain degrees. Um, certainly on some of the vocals, but, um, but other than that, I mean, it's a pretty good record. I mean, uh, you know, about half of it, I really like, but it sounds, you know, it's like they picked up right where they left off, you know? And I mean, I think this essentially was birthed out of, um, Rick Ocasek, uh, was working, um, I think with Jack Knife Lee, who co-produced this. And I think just, you know, shooting the shit in the studio, Jack Knife Lee, you know, they were talking about car songs and stuff with Rick Ocasek, and he was talking about how, you know, he could write a car song in five minutes if he wanted to, and I think he, the, you know, the challenge was accepted, and he went off and wrote one of these tunes, I think Blue Tip or Sad Song, um, and, uh, and it was just like, I guess it just kind of sparked the idea, of like, hey, let me call the guys up and maybe get together and record these, and they did it. They did a short tour just to promote this. I, I didn't go. The Cars were always kind of famous for not being the most exciting band live. Um, but now in hindsight, I kind of wish I had gone, you know, I think uh, it might have been good. I mean, 
even though we didn't know at the time like that was probably going to be it um it, it still kind of had that vibe about it it didn't feel like this band was reconvening and they were going to start recording albums every couple of years again it felt like this was kind of like a you know a last hurrah definitely so i, I kind of wish maybe i had gone to see them live you know and of course unfortunately a few years ago rick Ocasek passed away and that's pretty much it for the cars and that's everything i got for them um you know it's pretty much the whole collection like i said there's a complete greatest hits thing out there that i don't have i don't i know they put out like a live dvd one or two live dvds but i don't think they there maybe there is uh it might actually it might only be on vinyl maybe there is a live record that you can only get on vinyl but yeah just a great band phenomenal band you know classic rock new wave you know just awesome band and that's the cars if you're not familiar with them i'd be surprised but uh let me know what you think of the cars let me know what what some of your favorite albums are or tracks or whatever i'd love to hear uh your thoughts uh on the cars so thanks again for watching and we'll see you the next time later on